Hi there and welcome to another update from the Five Gates Union. My name's Gabby and I work in the FBU Communications team and today I'm joined by General Secretary Matt Rack who's going to be talk about the anti-union laws and the new minimum service levels published by the government this month. Um, so Matt, first off, can you talk about what these new laws do? Gabby, these uh, new legislation is anti-strike legislation uh, which aims to bring in so-called minimum service levels so that even if workers vote for a strike the employer can still set a minimum service level and require certain groups of workers who would be named who are required to come into work even though it's a strike day. And it's targeted at certain key sectors, ambulance services, railways, uh, education, fire and rescue services is one of those sectors and our regulations have just been published. Is there anything really specific within those regulations in terms of the percentage of coverage? Yeah, so the, the uh, percentage, uh, is, it's a bit bizarre. They've picked this figure of 73%. So 73% of the normal availability of fire engines should be available on a strike day in terms of uh, fire engine cover. In terms of emergency fire controls, then it should be as though there is not a strike on uh, and all calls to be answered. Uh, and an, another provision in relation to fire safety to deal with supposed uh, life-threatening uh, issues. So there are specific regulations uh, relating to the Fire and Rescue Service. I see. And is this UK-wide? No. I think another thing to point out is the chaos that this is going to create because, uh, first of all, the legislation doesn't apply in Northern Ireland. So we've got UK-wide uh, paying conditions uh, bargaining. The legislation doesn't apply at all in Northern Ireland and the regulations do not apply in Scotland or Wales. And it appears that the Scottish government and the Welsh government do not appear to be intending to introduce their own regulations. So this is England only uh, regulations that we're dealing with. And then uh, we had a meeting uh, with the Home Office yesterday and they made clear that actually the decision to enforce a work notice rests with the employer. So uh, there is a question whether employers do so or not, and in uh, a strike on the railways recently, the employers decided not to use that legislation. And I'm aware that in education, uh, an academy trust recently has just announced that they will not be using that legislation. I see. So why is the government doing all this? I think uh, firefighters need to remember, looking back at last year's uh, pay settlement, I think there's two reasons we got that pay settlement, which people voted overwhelmingly for. Uh, firstly, we've got national collective bargaining. That means we talk across the table with our employers and we don't have a pay review body. And secondly, we've got the right to strike. Those two issues are absolutely crucial to how we uh, defend our paying conditions. And let's be clear, we've got a government that wants to take away our rights to defend ourselves in the fire and rescue service, but in all these other sectors as well. It's absolutely clear that's what they want to do in order to force down wages, conditions, pensions and other uh, issues. Absolutely. So what happens now? What are the next steps in uh, put to Parliament? So the, these regulations have to go through a parliamentary process um, and we will be raising that with opposition MPs to challenge that and, and that's at an early stage but we need to we need to pursue that uh, and we'll be giving advice to members hopefully about how they may be able to support us on that. But also, uh, we're aware that uh, the Labour Party has currently pledged to repeal this legislation within, within 100 days of uh, becoming a government. We need to hold them to account and say, if that's what you're saying, then we expect you to deliver it. And we need to build a movement and make sure that uh, they, they do that. I think also, uh, as part of the wider trade union movement, we've raised questions about building a mass campaign to make this legislation, frankly, unworkable. Uh, we've already seen a little bit of that on the railways. Uh, and just because the government intends to use this law against us doesn't mean that they can get away with it. Is there anything else the FBU has done to pause these new laws? And what else can we do to stop these now? So we have raised this with uh, within uh, Parliament. We've raised it in the Labour Party. We've raised it in the TUC. And we, I think we've certainly played a role in pushing the, the issue further up the political agenda. There's still a lot to be done. It's early days. This is new legislation. It's not been tested, really. Uh, the first test, it fell on, on, the, on the railways with a train driver strike. It's not been tested in the Fire and Rescue Service. It's not been tested elsewhere. I think our job, first of all, is to make sure people are aware of how dangerous this legislation, how undemocratic it is. Uh, and uh, 
uh, build a campaign, not just in the FBU, but across the trade union movement to say this legislation has got to go and we've got to build a movement against it. Is there anything locally that can be done? I think uh, we, uh, we're just discussing this question of the role of the individual employer. So, uh, as I say, on the railways, uh, we have a specific example where an employer threatened to use the law and then decided not to. So the question of whether this legislation and these regulations are used or not is a matter of individual employers. I think this legislation will worsen industrial relations in the fire service and we need to be talking to employers now to say, actually, you're not required to use it, just to give us a guarantee in advance that you will not use it. I think that helps things. And that's frankly what the Scottish First Minister did when this was first raised, that they made clear that in Scotland, the Scottish Government would not be using this legislation. There's nothing to prevent any fire service in England doing exactly the same. And we touched a little bit on non-compliance, and are there any examples of when workers have successfully defeated anti-union laws? Yeah, I think if you look at in, in history, just because governments have brought in these undemocratic laws doesn't mean that it's, it's been effective. And they're, they're in the 1970s, for example, some very famous disputes that led to such legislation just becoming unworkable and eventually being withdrawn. I'm not saying that's where we are currently, but that there are certainly historical precedents that we could look to about how you build a campaign to challenge this sort of anti-worker, anti-union law. And I think that's the sort of aim we've got to, to set ourselves. But also, we've got an election coming up this year, well, more than likely, and we've got politicians in the Labour Party who say they will repeal it. Our job is to say, fine, we will be holding you to account and we demand that you do deliver on your promises and this legislation is scrapped. That's great. Thanks. That's really comprehensive. So if you'd like to learn more about this or any other updates from the Five Gates Union, you can go to our website, which is www.fbu.org.uk, or you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at FBU National and on Facebook at Five Gates Union. Thanks very much, Matt. Thanks, Gabby. Thanks, everyone.